Hi class, it's Ms. Tran again. Nice to see you. Before we get started on our lecture today, I would like to pose a question to everyone, and that question is, have you ever noticed that movies like Superman, Harry Potter, the Marvel movies, and even Star Wars seem to follow the same pattern or plot? Well, there's a reason for that, and we'll be getting into that today, and it's known as the hero cycle. So the hero cycle is also known as the monomyth, which we will get into detail later, and we will look at it closely in Homer's The Odyssey while making these connections to modern movies and blockbuster hits. All right, so let's get started. So the origin of the hero cycle was originally coined by author James Joyce and eventually became popularized as a monomyth by American theorist Joseph Campbell in his book titled The Hero with a Thousand Faces. And what's interesting in his novel is that he states there's a common pattern streaming between each book and narrative across different cultures worldwide. And this pattern, he noted, was the theme of the hero myth. In his quote, he states, the theme of the hero myth is universal, occurring in every culture, every time. So these patterns of heroes encountering monsters, going through trials and errors, is common across stories that we see today. So getting to more detail, we have what is the monomyth? And the monomyth is what Joseph Campbell categorized into exactly 17 stages and three main parts. So the monomyth is a classic pattern that is generated in across every story, narratives worldwide, and the three main parts are one, the departure, two, the initiation, and three, the return. So we're not going to get into too much detail about these 17 stages for each of these three parts, but we are going to look at it from an outside perspective where there's the initiation, there's separation, and return. So let's take a look at that in detail. So applying this model myth model in the Odyssey starts with the departure. And the departure refers to the separation from home. We see this at the beginning of Odysseus's journey, even though the story starts in media res, which is the middle of the part of the story, he engages in combat against the Trojans in the Trojan War, and that's when he departs from home. Trying to get back after 20 years or so, he has to go through the initiation, which is the second stage of the monomyth model, where he's going through trials and tribulations against different monsters, and also gathering learning experience from these obstacles as a result. So as we've already read, Odysseus goes through obstacles such as looting the island to conies and learning that greed is not a very good trait to demonstrate as a hero or a leader because he lost his men as a result and did not get anything beneficial from that experience. Another example of learning experience for Odysseus was when he demonstrated cleverness against Cyclops. He calls himself nobody, and Polyphemus falls for it, and eventually Odysseus is lucky to get his men out of that situation. Odysseus also demonstrates loyalty in protecting his men against the trance of the Lotus Eaters when they felt like they could live on paradise forever. But obviously that wasn't the case, and he was able to get them out of that situation. And the third part of the monomyth model is the return. And while we haven't gotten to that part of the story yet, we know that eventually Odysseus will return to his destination, his desire to go home to Ithaca, to his son Telemachus and his wife Penelope. Okay. So you might be wondering how exactly does the monomyth model work in modern literature and movies? So there's a variation of it. And even though there's variation, there is a very similar pattern and seeing that there's a tripartite model, as we see in the Odyssey with a departure, initiation, return, we also see in this chart here for the hero's journey. Now, the hero cycle was also adopted and modified by a theorist and writer, Christopher Vogler, and he divided his part into 12 stages. And here are the 12 stages indicated in the cycle. So this is just to show that the ordinary world in Act 1 and Act 2 are kind of shortened, but you see that most of the story goes on in Act 2, which is when the character goes through the main tribulations and trials and errors. So take a movie like Harry Potter, for instance. He's in the ordinary world where he lives on Privet Drive with the Dursleys. 
and he gets a call to Hogwarts in Philosopher's Stone. And in that special world of Hogwarts, he encounters Cerberus, he sees Professor Snape, not really trusting him, Professor Dumbledore, he also meets his friends, Hermione and Ron, and he goes through all these different events, and then eventually he returns to Privet Drive after his first year of Hogwarts. And the story goes on and on, following the same sequence of events. So you might be wondering, why am I talking about modern literature and connecting it back to the Odyssey? Well, we can see that these block the Buster hits that we watch every single day are connected to the model myth model, and it's repeated, and these movies capitalize on our experiences. We can see that ancient literature such as the Odyssey are still relevant today because they show parallels in revealing the human nature and our experiences in ways such as forming new relationships going through betrayal, and ultimately learning from our mistakes. So as students, as people, we learn and we grow, and we're writers of our stories. So we admire these heroes by learning about their virtues, and ultimately wanting to become more virtuous and heroic in a way by learning from our own experiences. So I hope you guys found that helpful, and I'd like to thank you for watching. Thank you.